I want to discuss parallel processing in this video because it's a really important mixing and production technique and because machine is not a DAW it's not always the most obvious way how to route and do sophisticated routings with sends and returns and all this kind of stuff. So the reason we're going to want to do some parallel processing is to do parallel compression in this case. One of the most uh, obvious reasons to use parallel processing. So with parallel compression, the idea is pretty simple. You have your main signal. In this case, I'm going to send uh, two drum groups. All right, so that's my main signal. And my compressed, overly compressed, completely squashed signal over here. This is the main, this is the compression. And when they're running parallel, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You wouldn't want to completely squash your main group because it's going to suck the life and it's going to get real thin. Whereas if you have a very thin yet punchy signal over here and your full signal, you get the best of both worlds and you can blend between them. That's what we're going to do in this case. So I have some drums playing. You know, they're kind of punchy already, but they could be way better. And I got a synth line. And on group C, I have my compressors. So I'm going to activate them so you can hear what the parallel compression is doing. I'm aware it's getting a little bit louder, but more importantly, you hear how the kick and the snare are just hitting you in the face. Okay? And that is because on group C, I'm running it into a Native Instruments VC160, which is a DBX160 emulation, a perfect compressor for this kind of stuff, where you're just really going to get such a punchy result, squashed to death. <laughs> uh, but it's good when you're, when you're balancing it. So, how do we actually send this stuff to group C? So I have my group, and what we're going to do is come to the group channel. So once we're inside of the group outputs, input, output, etc., come over to the auxiliary tab, and by default these will be set to none. And what you can do is literally just point the entire drum group to a new group. For instance, group C, where I have my compressor. And I even went as far as to set up three different compressors and again, these are already set, so they're they're basically, like, completely squashed already. Like, I mean, this thing is running insane. You would not normally do that. So, let's come back to group A. And now, at the group level, the auxiliary is being sent to group C, sound 1. Important to note, the way to make this work is very important that you have to adjust the order. Now... You, by default, when you open up any group, post is going to be set as the default setting. And what post means is that you basically, any signal you have that you're sending to your auxiliary is going post fader. So if I turn down the level or adjust the panning on that group, it's adjusting what's being sent to that auxiliary. Now, if you're not sending, if I turn down the volume, I'm not sending any info to that compressor. I have to set this to pre, because that means even if I turn down the level of this drum group, it's still being sent full volume, full signal, to my compressor. And then I'm able to blend inside of the mixer from there. So, we have it set up. Let's activate our compressor. And let me just demonstrate post, actually. And you'll see what the problem is here. When I come to my mix page, watch what happens when I turn down my drum groups. I'm getting no compressed signal at all anymore. To hear the compressed signal, I actually have to turn these up. Well, that's no good because I really can't tell if the parallel compression is doing anything useful. So let me set these to pre, and you'll see the difference now because we can blend and get a perfect balance. I turn them down, and there's the fully compressed signal. So from here, I can adjust my compressor settings to really get the punch the way I want it, and then start to bring in the original. And that way I'm creating a mix between the two. Very simple. Easy as that. Now another thing you might 
like to do is that once you parallel processing is set up, again, use different flavors of compression. For instance, I'm using a, here's a UA1176, here's a FabFilter Pro C. And so I can actually go in and send these different groups to different compressors now. Maybe it'll make a difference. Yep, with that 1176, it's just, you hear what happened on the low end on the kick specifically? It's a completely different flavor because it's a different kind of compressor. Actually, kind of like how that one's set up. So very easy. Expl explore with it. Try it out. It's going to be different depending on what input you're sending to it and, and how, how much blend you're doing. But very important. Like those drums sound much better now than they did before. Doesn't mean you have to always use parallel compression. But in this case, in this kind of dance music type style, it's very important.